Welcome back to War Thunder News. This week, well, just about nothing actually happened. So I decided, hey, why not let's think about what's going to come up in 2020? Because 2020, I think, is going to be a pretty big year. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Some things that we know are coming in 2020 are Swedish tanks, Italian Navy, Chinese helicopters, and Italian helicopters. Those were all discussed on a article from MMORPG.com. They also mentioned that battle cruisers are planned on the article. We also know that Japan is going to get a very advanced F for next patch. So knowing all this, I kind of put together a list of things that we can expect to happen in order in which they could probably happen. So the first thing on this list actually isn't patch 1.97. You see, last year round, there was an event where you could research a Russian destroyer and a US bomber. Now, I'm pretty sure the only reason why this event was happening was because no one was playing naval. So Gaijin decided to give most people a premium. It was a pretty simple event to try to get them into naval. So I'm pretty sure this event won't repeat itself, but there's always the possibility that it will. But anyways, whether that happens or doesn't, next event would be patch 1.97. What we can expect there, I'd say 864 Apaches and a good amount of them. There's the British one, the Israeli one, which will most likely be a premium, and then the 864A and 864D for the US tree. The 864s are going to be some pretty spooky helicopters, as, as the radar systems are currently in the files and the data miner Gentless Pi actually hooked them up to an existing thing for, for a single player mission. And they got two functions, one one for aircraft and one for ground vehicles it seems. Other things that we could expect for 1.97 would be aircraft that are equal to or around the F4EJ Kai. Perhaps the regular F4E for the US. And if other nations don't get equivalent aircraft at the least they could get equipment for those aircraft that are equivalent to the scary stuff that are coming with the F4EJ. We could also expect the aircraft models that were leaked back in March on that one dude's DeviantArt page to be start adding to the game as the J6K1 and Tisma were part of that list. So obviously it proves that Gaijin has at least some of these vehicles finished. However, seeing as most of them are Japanese and Russian, I kind of don't expect all of them to come at once because it'd be a really large boost of World War II vehicles in one patch. And Gaijin hasn't been doing that too much lately. Though I wouldn't be against it, I'd totally welcome it if that was Gaijin's plan. Also, we can expect Swedish tanks to be added in 1.97. And Swedish tanks, I think, will be pretty interesting. However, I will say also that it's not a guarantee guarantee that Swedish tanks are going to come in the next packs even though we have pre-order packs for them already. We had pre-order packs for the Italian tanks for well over a year or so but it wouldn't bet too much against them not coming in the patch. Like it would be really annoying if Gaijin pulled that twice. Last things to say about 1.97 is that it's very possible the release date was leaked along with information about the 864 Piton and the date stated was March 9th which is actually pretty close to what 1.97 was at. The event after that one would be April Fools, and I have two strong ideas on exactly what I think are gonna happen for this year's April Fools. Either it's going to be modern jets, I'm talking like modern, modern jets, or we're gonna see the P-1000 rat because it's the year of the rat. However, I'm leaning more towards it being modern jets as honestly, I kind of feel like that is going to be the theme of this year, if you were to put it, as pushing further in aircraft technology like we did with tanks. Personally, I would also like to see World War One tanks as a April Fool's event, or hey, just maybe a regular event. Add them to the tree, they're pretty cool. Final possibility for April Fool's is what some random viewer told me, I forgot exactly who, but his thought is maybe we're gonna see tractor tanks, which would be kind of silly. After that would be the spring event, either Chronicles of World War Two, maybe if they have that fixed, or it'll be another crafting event, and I hope if it is another crafting event that they found a way to make it less completely awful. And as for the event vehicles, well, I've never actually seen someone successfully predict any of the event vehicles before Gaijin announces it in some way. I guess the most predictable one would be the IS-7. However, Gaijin also kind of said it was going to be an event vehicle. As what I would like to see the event vehicles be, well, to me, event vehicles need to be very strange. Commonly, one-off prototypes. The KV-7 would be an ideal tank for this role, as it is strange. It has two main cannons. I think some had three. And it has just about no place in the actual tree. I'd also love to see some of the really bizarre American prototypes that they had. So after the suffering of the spring event would come around patch 1.99. And my theory is this patch is going to be about the Italian Navy and one of the nation's helicopter trees. And I lean towards a Chinese heli tree because all the Italians would be buying the Italian boats. And I doubt the Chinese have much interest in the Italian tree. So you'd be able to dip with both of those chips. The Italian Navy is going to be a really cool one. Italy had a lot of nice boats, but also because Gaijin has spoke of adding a battle cruisers to the game and maybe even battleships and in my estimation if you were going to do that it would be best to do it 
around the time you're announcing another Navy tree to kind of get the Navy hype to the maximum. As for Chinese helicopters, well, China had a good amount of interest in helicopters. I haven't looked too far into them, but I'm pretty sure you do the majority of the tree without any copy paste. I think the first one would be a copy paste. Uh, China did use the MI4s, but they did not use any of the MI28s or any other Russian helicopters. They started developing their own. Also in this patch, it's very possible we could see the M60 slip, as the model for that was found a few months after the models that were found in May. So if it takes them about a full year to add something to the game, I'd expect this tank to come around in 1.99. The patch after this one is the one that I think is going to be the most intense. It will either be called 1.101 or 2.01. And this will be the patch that's near Gamescom. And typically on these patches that are near Gamescom, we get some pretty game altering things. Last year, 2019, we got Mach 2 jets and a Chinese tech tree. And the year before that, I'm pretty sure it was helicopters. So what could be the game altering stuff this time around? My theory is that we're going to get 1980s aircraft with all their extremely modern stuff. Probably only starting out with US and Russia, maybe Germany as well. But this definitely would be game altering as this would be some pretty high tech material. We have stuff like guided bombs, not just heat sensing guided bombs like laser guided bombs and all that. Radar guided missiles and of course countermeasures to all that crazy stuff. It's also possible we could see some more advanced anti-aircraft equipment to deal with these new threats from the air. Perhaps not more advanced because we already have extremely advanced anti-aircraft stuff but I mean like radar guided things and whatnot. Now my knowledge on late Cold War jets is very limited so you guys in the comments are going to have to inform me on exactly what nation would get what. But I wonder if by then we'll get the A-10 because if you think about it the A-10 wouldn't be too overpowered compared to a lot of the stuff that's already coming and in fact might actually just be bad depending on what battle rating they give it. Although honestly I wouldn't be surprised if it did come in the next patch 1.97 because really it's not that advanced of a plane. It's from the 70s uh, and they just put more stuff on it to keep it in the air but the base design is the same. It's a flying gun. Anyways I think I'm getting off topic here. Sometime around this will be the summer event or Operation Heat or whatever they're calling it nowadays. Although it actually seems that we have two summer events or a summer event and then a autumn event. Although like the spring event I have no basis on what to start speculating what the vehicles for them will be. After that would be patch 2.03 or 1.13 depending on how Gaijin decides to go past the 2.0 mark. For this patch I think that we'll get another helicopter tree as we were promised two of them for this year. That's really all I would expect. The patch before the last patch of the year was always kind of small and rammed in there. But what's also more interesting is that it's expected for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox whatever they're calling it this time around to be released near the end of the year in the Christmas season as that's what happened to the prior season of consoles the PS4 and the Xbox whatever that one was called. Now this is interesting because it could lead to two things perhaps graphical improvements for War Thunder at least for console users but also it's my suspect that they have delayed the release of Enlisted for it to line up with the release of the new consoles. While that won't really affect War Thunder too much I personally have been looking forward to this game because War Thunder I've been getting a little bored with and want some shoot. So if there's a shoot game that is anyway similar to War Thunder, I'm not sure how these games are going to work, I'd be very interested in that. Now the final patch of this year, 2.05 or 1.105, which would be weird. Gatchin, please don't go with the 1.1 style. Typically these patches ending with a 5 are the release of a new tree. It's been actually quite common for a new tree to be released at the end of the year. But what would the new tree be? Unless they actually do delay the Swedish tank tree till a full year, what else could they add? Swedish Navy would be boring. I don't think there's many people that care too much about Swedish boat. They had some cool ones, but they also didn't have like that substantial of a navy. The biggest things they had were coastal defense battleships, which are battleships that were extremely slow and also wouldn't really put much of a fight up against some of the late war battleships or even some of the early war ones, which I would expect us to have by that time. If the final tree of the year was to be a heli tree, that would be really disappointing. The most likely situation would be them to add a new nation, but what nation could they add? Well, there's actually quite a few that I think would fit the criteria. I've actually been working with some people to put together a Hungarian tree. Well, they've been doing all the work. I was just going to make a video about it. And from what I've seen, there's actually a pretty substantial tree. Uh, it's a fair amount of copy paste, but it's not too bad. And historically, Hungary did partake in World War II and they were involved in the Cold War. Nowadays, their stuff isn't exactly top tier. They did just buy some Leo 2s apparently. And I'm not too sure about their Air Force, but once again, they were part of the Soviet Union, so they have at least some top tier Soviet things. Another strong possibility would be Yugoslavia, as they had a strong interaction in World War II and were part of the Soviet Union and even had conflicts at the turn of the century, which seems to be the dates that we're going towards. Equipment-wise, 
because I'm not so sure about their navy and there would be a good amount of copy paste. Although also in Yugoslavia, there was a large amount of weird prototyping going on, which I personally think is a strong armament for them to be added to the game. However, personally, I think the best thing that they could do is actually not add a new nation and fix the trees that currently exist. For example, one thing they could do is add a heavy tank line to the Japanese tree. There weren't many Japanese heavy tanks, but there was a few bizarre prototypes out there that have some information on them. And it seems guys is not too foreign to the ideas of uh, filling in the blanks, especially when it comes to Japan for whatever reason. But I think you could also have like a light tank line added to the German tree as it takes like typically 30 vehicles to build a whole tree. Just take that development time and effort and put it into vehicles for existing ones. There's a lot of really cool things they could have added for China that they didn't. And if you were to slap them all in one patch, it would be quite exciting for a lot of the Chinese players out there. Or they could just go straight for left field and add blimps to the game. Anyways, that's just about all the events that I'm assuming are going to happen within the year of 2020 for War Thunder. Tell me your thoughts and your own predictions on what it is in the comments below. Before I end this video, I'd like to thank my YouTube members, The Real Rat, CT Center, Grimace, I Like Them Thick, Sukabliet Idinahui, Mighty Peppers, Pointless Gun Sinks, and Waffly Joker 6. YouTube members get videos uploaded to them a little bit early, unique Discord rules, and emojis during stream. So if you'd like to join them, it's $5 a month. You have to press the join button right next to the sub button. If you have any comments, concerns, or questions, you can come up down below on my Discord. If you've liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, don't hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I make worth them to news videos, although this one isn't really a news video. Every Sunday, I make random videos throughout the week. I make War Thunder Mythbuster episodes. I want to do Wednesday or Thursday. Still haven't decided on that. And I stream on Saturdays. Although last Saturday I accidentally slept in like all day. This Saturday I have fixed my sleeping schedule so it should not happen again. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a good day. In the terms of bonus news, because there actually was some news this week. Kind of. As it turns out, Gaijin is indeed once again changing the penetration of things, not according to their penetration calculator that they have on their website. It's almost like removing the historical penetrations was only done so they could arbitrarily change penetrations on a dime without being challenged because there's no actual documents to back up any of the penetrations anymore. If you're gonna do that though, why do the low tier French and Japanese tanks still suck? Just buff them. If you're not gonna follow any things to try to balance the game, well at least balance the game.